Hello, hi everyone. Welcome back to Wu Can Cook. My name is Wesley, and this is a show where we are slowly cooking our way through all of the food from my childhood. Today, we're diving back into our series dedicated to Korean comfort food classics with a shot at a variation on the classic Yangnyeom fried chicken, wherein we'll be making use of some cornflakes to create a unique, crispy, crunchy breading. For those unfamiliar, the Korean Yangnyeom chicken is best known for its use of gochujang and honey to create its iconically fiery red, sticky, sweet, and savory glaze that we all know and love. Those following along with this channel may recall that we have now done a handful of iterations of this dish already, including a chicken wing version as well as a Shake Shack inspired chicken sando not too long ago. So, for our version today, we will absolutely be borrowing a handful of elements that I think we've dialed in pretty well at this point, including our gochujang glaze made with just a touch of sweet chili sauce to complement our sugars. Our cornflake breading, of course, will likely be our most unique addition to today's dish, wherein the crunchy, crispy texture of the cereal will give us a nice head start on creating a crispy bread into our fried chicken. Maybe most importantly though, because of this head start, this also makes today's fried chicken probably the most amenable to shallow frying, air frying, or even baking in lieu of deep frying, since we won't be relying on the deep fry to crisp up our breading. So, we'll absolutely be doing a bit of comparing to see what yields the best results, since as many may know, one of the most commonly asked questions on this channel is, can I make this without deep frying, because I'm afraid I might set my house on fire. Okay, so let's get into it. Okay, so diving right in, we're kicking things off here first with some aromatic veggies to go along with our glaze today. This is going to be 4 cloves of crushed and minced garlic to start, followed by 1 inch or about 1 tablespoon of finely minced ginger, and that's actually all that we're going to be chopping today, which is pretty awesome. You may notice as we move along here that the main theme of today's dish is going to be about shortcuts that help make the process quicker and easier, which I'm always a fan of because it means that folks will actually attempt this one, which is, you know, important. It's sort of the whole point. Anyway, moving right along, we're diving into our glaze here next. This is more or less going to be borrowed from our chicken wing young num fried chicken, which can be found here. Going into my mixing bowl here first is 4 tablespoons of soy sauce to start, followed by 2 tablespoons of rice vinegar for some brightness and acidity. Next up are the sugars that will make up our glaze today, which as promised features 2 tablespoons of sweet chili sauce to complement our additional 2 tablespoons of honey for a nice bit of complex sweetness and depth of flavor. Finally, last up, this is our 2 tablespoons of gochujang going in. As with any time that we're using gochujang, this stuff is pretty thick and sticky, so we'll want to be sure to thoroughly whisk this up until fully combined into a thick, sticky sauce, like so. Up next, moving right along, is our batter, which is going to include 3 separate coatings to our chicken today, a dry batter to start, followed by an egg wash, and finally our cornflake coating to finish. So, up first here with our dry batter, this is half a cup of AP flour going into my mixing bowl to start, followed by a little bit of seasoning to give us some umami. This is a pinch of dashi powder and kosher salt going in. I'm giving this a quick mix to combine, then setting aside for a moment while we whisk up our egg wash. This is two eggs whisked to combine, then set aside while we prep our third and final coating. Into my last mixing bowl here is a full cup of cornflakes, which I'm breaking down by hand into smaller bits. Cornflakes on their own are just about the most boring type of cereal that you can find. You might recognize them from cereals like Frosted Flakes or Honey Bunches of Oats, most of which have an additional ingredient to complement the cornflakes. Our plain cornflakes today, however, are pretty bland and flavorless, which in fact is actually exactly what we need for our breading. No one wants a Frosted Flake coated fried chicken, right? Wait, right? In any case, today I've got some bone-in chicken drumsticks here because I think it's going to work best in the oven, but this should also work just fine with chicken breast, thigh, wings, or really whatever else you want to use. 
I'm starting by coating it in our dry batter here first, followed next by my egg wash, and finally our cornflakes to round this all out. The challenge today, of course, is going to be getting as much of these cornflakes to stick to the chicken as possible, since they're going to have a tendency to come off, particularly during the deep fry. So, I'm pressing my chicken very firmly here into the cornflakes, which is also going to give us a nice opportunity to continue to break down our flakes into smaller pieces, too. I've got three of my drumsticks here destined for the deep fryer, with one set aside on a sheet tray destined for the oven. I'm giving this one a quick coating in some grapeseed oil, then placing in a 350 degree F oven for 20 to 25 minutes until 160 degrees F internally. Meanwhile, over on the stove, I have my fryer heating up to 350 degrees F as well, then I'm deep frying these remaining drumsticks also to 160 degrees F internally. This actually took a little bit longer than I expected for our drumsticks, maybe 6 to 8 minutes or so, though I imagine a chicken thigh or wing would cook a little faster. Because of this though, you'll notice our cornflake coating is deeply golden brown as opposed to our baked version, which is a little bit lighter in color. You'll also notice, however, that this one did bake a little bit unevenly since our oven doesn't give us the same uniform heat source that a deep fry does. Ultimately, I don't think that it's going to be that much of an issue since we're also going to be glazing these in a moment, but for your own attempts though, I may recommend rotating your drumsticks every 5 minutes or so to achieve a more even browning. Back over on the stove, I've removed my fryer oil and reheated the wok as hot as possible. Then this is 2 tablespoons of peanut oil going in, and as always, long yao for that nice non-stick surface. Next, going in here first are my aromatic veggies. Here's my garlic and ginger going in for about 15 seconds until nice and fragrant. Then I'm reducing my heat to a medium temperature and adding in my glaze mixture plus about a quarter cup of water so that those sugars don't immediately burn. We're letting this all simmer for about 5 minutes until a thick and sticky glaze forms. You'll know it's ready when you can run your spatula through the glaze and it stays divided, like so. I'm killing the heat here, then glazing my drumsticks one at a time because I'm a little bit worried that the cornflakes are going to start breaking off. Then back over on the cutting board, we're finishing this all off with a little bit of sesame seed and we're ready to eat. Okay, so although I am well aware that we have made a lot of fried chicken on this channel, this is the first time that we've used cornflake as a breading, and to be honest, I was a little bit skeptical going in. It just seemed like we were cutting more corners than we should be here. On review though, I do think that our final results are absolutely a worthy contender for a quality piece of fried chicken. The cornflakes crisp up nicely in the fry, though as you may have noticed, we did lose quite a bit of it during the deep fry too. So, I'll stress again, press very firmly when you're coating your chicken or they'll come apart in the cook. To compare, while I did think that the baked version had some issues with evenness in cooking, once the chicken was glazed, I honestly couldn't really tell the difference between the deep fried and baked drumsticks. Again, as I had expected, since the cornflakes are already crispy and crunchy in their plain state, we're not really relying on the deep fry to crisp up our breading, so the baked chicken absolutely checks out. So, all this said, I know folks have been asking me for basically 3 years, how do I make fried chicken without deep frying? And this is it. Do this. Okay, so that's it everyone. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you give this one a shot. For those who are new to this series, this one is part of a larger series that we've been doing that's dedicated to Korean comfort food classics. So definitely check out that series next if you haven't yet because there's a lot of these. For the Bay Area locals, the Wu Can Cook fried rice pop-up is now at Wondrous Brewing in Emeryville every Thursday through Sunday. So come by and say hi then if you can. More about that at wukankook.com slash eats. Also, a fun update, we've got t-shirts. I'm super excited to be partnering with my good friends at Paul. Walk prints to make these super sweet Wu Can Cook shirts. They're super soft and comfortable and also have a picture of me on the back, which is crazy. We're selling these at the Wu Can Cook pop-up or you can head over to wukankook.com slash shop to grab one from the online store too. As always, like, comment, subscribe, share, be nice YouTubers, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Do you feel